Good morning. If you've never seen Video or Video Church before, then this might be a little bit of a surprise to you. But have you ever thought about what would happen if Scooby Doo came to church? What if a minion showed up in your dominion, so to speak, of pews and worship services and you know, Sunday morning service? Would you welcome the Dominion in? You know, those guys that are kind of like really out to cause and create havoc. Where are you as far as people visiting your house? Where are you as far as people coming to your home? Now, I'm not saying that I want to invade your house. No offense. I know what goes on behind closed doors. And if you're anything like me, hey, you know, I, I, I love you. God bless you, but, you know, there's time and a place for everything. You know, and sometimes, while I prepare for people to visit, and I want my home to be an open door, that doesn't mean that I'm always willing to have people just come in anytime, anywhere, any place. But, in the early days of, we would say, the church, or let's just call it, when people followed Jesus, it was every day, any way, any place, any time. You see, Jesus went throughout Jerusalem, Israel, Capernaum, throughout the entire land, traveling as a vagabond. You might say a sojourner passing through this strange and foreign land. He took his disciples and called them one by one to follow him. In those days, it was a little bit easier because the land was preoccupied with being occupied by Roman rule. You could say that there were people in the land that were not Jewish, that were in control of everything that involved being Jewish. You could say there were people that were claiming to be Jews, who were in fact religious leaders, that controlled a lot of what went on as far as religious life was concerned. Now, pardon me, but when the Son of Man, the Son of God, suddenly appears on the scene, and he's full grown, about 30 years old, and starts declaring the kingdom of heaven is at hand, um, I wonder how many people understood this is the Son of the Creator of the universe, the God who they said, if I could only talk to God, if God would only talk to me. Well... I don't know about you, but uh, <laughs> I think they got what they prayed for. But it wasn't the way they expected. And I guess that's what we're talking about this morning. Maybe church isn't what you expected it to be. Maybe your religion, whatever it may be, personal religion that is. You see, I live in a state where there's people that have personal faith. They may be a Mormon or the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They may be a Jack Mormon. They may have ideas about what the Latter-day Saints believe in, or they may know what they believe in and follow that particular personal faith. And that's a choice of their own. I don't. Now, my personal faith is a personal, interactive, reactive, constant, interlocuted, I like to say, um, relationship with God Almighty through His Son, Jesus. And it's kind of fun to talk about that because when you're recording, you get the opportunity to see, reflect, and think about what you're saying and what you're doing. Because the fun thing about being in Vidibo Church is recording videos that you'll be able to listen to, to understand, and to relate personal information as you impart that to other people. Even as I sat here on the porch, I had missionaries walk by, and I'm sure they were listening and they were interested in what I had to say because they're on their way to church. Now, in Vidivo Church, you get to watch this anytime you want to. You get to see this anywhere you go. You get to relate to this according to what we say, the Spirit of God. You see, Vidivo Church is about the Word of God by the Spirit of God to the people of God about the Son of God, Jesus. 
we as Jesus freaks have been around a long time since the 70s, you know, kind of talking about, relating to, and declaring that Jesus is coming soon. And so in videos, you'll always hear about, hey, Jesus is coming sooner than you think. As a matter of fact, he's right around the corner knocking at the door, so to speak, now. But one of the things that I've discovered is that living in this land, in this place, at this time, people with their personal faith sometimes try to be something they're not. Imagine, if you will, a minion trying to be a human. Now, I don't think you could see this minion become anything else but a minion. Imagine Scooby-Doo trying to be Shaggy. Hmm, now that would be interesting. I remember a song in the Jesus movement that said, what if cartoons could praise the Lord? You know, and it was kind of cool. You know, what if Scooby-Doo would praise you? go, praise the Lord? You know, I mean, it was kind of cute. And I think it was done by Chris Rice, but I'm not sure. And it was cute. But it did bring out a point. What if, say, in my own personal experience, someone decided to come over and talk about Jesus? Would you be able to relate to that? Would you be able to talk about that? Is your personal faith real enough to handle, oh, I don't know, say, the owner of a bar being a Christian? I personally think I know one that's sitting on the Mississippi River. Oh, he may not be your idea of a perfect Christian or a religious Christian, but I have a feely, funny feeling that deep inside he's got a personal relationship with God due to the circumstances of his life that he's gone through. Would you be able to accept a person come walking into your church, your fellowship, your, let's say, Havura, you know, because there are some messianic Christians that are going to watch this video, so I'm going to begin to open up my Jewish background and explain sometimes some things that maybe you don't know the word of, but a Havur is just simply a fellowship, a group of people that have gathered together in order to understand, to study, and to learn. It could be like a school would be called a Havur. It really would, but a lot of people don't make the connection that public school could just as easily have been a religious school, which could just as easily have been a synagogue in the old days, in the old ways of what America used to be like, as well as what Jewish culture is like. So education used to be a part of your religious expression. We now have secular, what we call secular education, where we separated education from religion. Now, I don't know how that happened, but personally, I think if I want to be educated, I want to know as much about where I came from, where I'm going, and how I can get to where I want to be as much as possible. In educating in secular world the idea of learning to adapt to societal norms which is simply earning a living uh, you know I kind of like to learn how to do that you know I'd like to discover a job that I could make money at in order to provide for myself but then what if I'm providing for myself without God doesn't sound very educated to me sounds ignorant as a matter of fact I wonder if we haven't in some ways made ourselves stupid rather than smart. In other words, professing to be wise, have we somehow educated ourselves out of the knowledge of God instead of educating ourselves to the full comprehension of God involved in all parts of our life? That's what we talk about at video. We don't talk about separating ourselves from the world and its ways, but rather to discover and uncover what Jesus meant when he said, don't love the world nor the things of the world, but rather seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things, you know, the world, the jobs, all these other things, they fall into place. To me, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. You know, you can have a piece of the puzzle where you think you know something, but if that piece doesn't fit into the eternity, the eternal realm of God's kingdom, then maybe you have something that, quite frankly, you don't understand, but you have hung on to all this time. And that's where I get this whole idea about, hey, I don't care whether you're, you know, a Baptist, a Methodist, a Protestant, a Catholic, a, let's see, Pro a Protestant, that's right, cover that, of a Jew, <coughs> God knows we got into everything. 
a Mormon, um, a Jehovah's Witness, who cares? I mean, really, because you're still trying to discover and uncover what works for you. And that's part of, again, also what we talk about at Biblical Church. Does it work for you? Okay, go for it. You know, we like to say whatsoever it is that the Lord is telling you to do, hey, that's what you should do. I mean, God knows I don't want to interrupt God from taking you to discover something that maybe you need to learn about. I know for myself, I went out and learned about world religions. If I wanted to go to a, a, a imam and to ask him questions about the Muslim faith, I'd go to an imam and ask him, just, hey, what's that all about? If I wanted to go to Tibet, I don't have to go to Tibet, but if I wanted to go to Tibet and talk to the Dalai Lama, which he travels around the world now making, you know, kind of headways into his personal application of his way of life, because it's not just faith that the Dalai Lama exercises, but a way of life, which is what Jewish culture is about. Jewish religion was never simply about faith, but about a way of life. And in the early days of Christianity, that's kind of what Jesus declared, a way of life, a way of living. That's why he's called the way, the truth, and the life. And I guess that's where we come to a conclusion that we have to either admit or reject for ourselves. Are you, you? No, really. What are you? Who are you? Where are you going? What are you doing? I mean, no offense, but if you're a carpenter, then hey, you do work in wood, I imagine. I think that's what the word carpentry means. I don't think it just means about carpets. I mean, that's more called something else. English language kind of funny that way. Now, a woodworker would be working in wood, so we could say it that way. Well, that's why we get a little confused in faith and personal faith. Because, you see, the words used to mean what they mean, and they used to say what they mean directly. Not so much anymore. Christianity used to mean people that looked like, acted like, and easily died like Jesus. That's what Christian, the early days, it meant. Christianity today has implied a lot of variety of things to it. People like to say, well, there's so many denominations or applications or churches that are involved in Christianity that they don't know which one to choose. Well, I got news for you. It's not about Christianity, but the Christ in the entity. I mean, there's a lot of insanity out in the world, but the entity is the part of you, and the Christ is the part that you're talking about. So if you were talking about Christianity, then you'd say, you and Christ, put bluntly, and how you live your life. I know everyone wants to go someplace other than hell. I mean, put it bluntly, Scooby-Doo doesn't want to go to hell. The minions don't want to go to hell. Well, they might be looking there, but, you know, they don't want to go there. But the point is, nobody really wants to play with, you know, fire and get burned. They just want to see if it's there, just to make sure that they don't have to go there. And that's part of what the Jesus movement was all about. We used to run around saying, look, you must be born again. You could be a born-again Catholic, a born-again Protestant, a born-again Muslim, whatever it may be. Because once you were born again, not of the flesh, but of the Spirit, then the Spirit of God would lead you into all truth. He would be the one that began to apply whatever it is you're studying. Let's just say if you were a, you know, because I live in the state of Utah, let's just say if you were in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, you know, being a Mormon, if you were born again of the Spirit, then the Spirit of God would lead you. Now, I'm not going to say and claim that, you know, everybody that comes up to me and tells me, ah, I'm led by the Spirit, oh yeah, well great, you know, is going to follow Jesus, the Son of God, the Son of Man, because I know that if you're following God, you may be in an uneducated place, learning an education that He is applying to your life. And you might not know that much about Jesus yet. But you see, I've been around for, oh, I don't know, maybe 40 years as a Christian. Maybe longer than that as a born-again Christian. So I can pretty much tell who knows Jesus and who doesn't. I can talk to him for a few minutes, you know, and say, well, you know, what do you think about the Son of God? Well, you know, he's a nice guy, but he was just a man. I say, well, no, he was more than a man. He was more than a carpenter. 
he was Jewish. That's true. He was born of the Virgin Mary, you know, or the young woman, the maiden, the virgin, who happened to be called Mary, that she was of the tribe of the lineage of the son of David. You know, and that he fulfilled certain things that were said of him that would happen in order to prove he was what we call the Messiah, the chosen one, the anointed one, the Christ. And then certain times and places people come along to try to explain that to me and say, well, you don't understand the Bible. You don't understand the Word of God. You don't understand because, you see, you need something more than just the Bible in order to understand it. And I agree with them. You're right. I need the Spirit of God who inspired those who wrote it. Well, sometimes that's not what they mean. They tell me about some other book, you know, and sometimes that'll be, you know, with the Jehovah's Witnesses, a reworking of the book and changing it, or with, you know, the Mormons, they'll tell me that I need a, you know, like a, a commentary to come along, like Pearl of Great Price, or some other prophet to come along and tell me what they believe the Bible's supposed to say. Well, that's the same thing Muhammad said. You know, the Jews didn't get it right, the Christians didn't get it right, so we have the book that got it right. Okay. So let me sit back for a few minutes and watch what you do and how you live. Now I'll admit, when it comes to righteous living, when it comes to giving, when it comes to doing things, hey, Muslims got me impressed. Mormons got me impressed. Matter of fact, Jehovah's Witnesses got me impressed for how evangelistic they are. But what I see sometimes, for me, isn't exactly what they do. Me personally, I have to have a conversation with something that I believe in and someone I know in relationship to who I am. You see, if I had a wife and I never talked to her and she never talked to me, what kind of wife would that be? Well, that's where I'm at when it comes to my God and my personal relationship. You see, it's interesting that people will talk about God in the past tense or in the future tense, but what happened to in the present tense? You see, I have no pretense about who I am. I know who I am, and I know what I believe in. I know where I come from, I know where I'm going, and I know how to get there. And that's why I relate things about Jesus in my personal experience. I don't tell someone to follow something they don't know. Hey, that which I've seen, that which I've heard, and that which I've handled with my own hands is what I do. It's called video because it's about me and Jesus talking about you and God. Hey, if you want to go follow wherever you're going and doing whatever you're doing, by all means, please, as the sun rises over the Wasatch Mountains and is shining today down upon the entire basin, go be a good Mormon if you're going to be a Mormon. Go be a good Muslim if you're going to be a Muslim. Go be and do what it is that God is leading you to do. Now, I'll admit, for a while, you may be going kind of like sideways or upwards or downwards or around the townwards. You know, maybe today you're watching football. Well, be a good football watcher. But today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. In other words, if God is really God, if Scooby-Doo is going to your church, if the minion is coming in, what are you telling them? What is your overall message? Are you trying to make people better? Well, good luck with that. You know, I mean, Sure, for a while people look pretty good. You know, I mean, I, I I went down the Mississippi River, you know, paddling, and for 2,000 miles I met people that would just be totally inspiring to me about how they live, what they're doing, the encouragement that they were for me. But they were never put into a position of having to make a choice about what Jesus said, and that's where the rubber meets the road for me. In my personal faith. In the knowledge that I've been given and the requirement that I know that I'm going to stand before a living God and give an account for my life, I want to know that I kind of have a handle on what those requirements of my life are. One of them being, what did you do with Jesus? I mean, did you kind of shuffle him off to the side and forget that he is personal, that he is real, that Jesus is alive, living in you and me if you call upon the name of the Lord to be saved? If you ask him into your life, you don't have to go through these massive, you know, gyrations and obfuscations of trying to do something in some massive, you know, ceremony where you got to run forward, you know, and confess this and do that and be something else. But rather, 
All you need to do is call. All you need to do is ask. All you need to do really is figure out who you are. Because I want to know, what are you? Who are you? Where are you going? What are you going to do with this? Today, as we talked about this, and we're getting back into video, kind of through the idea that what if Scooby-Doo came to church? Would Scooby-Doo be a Christian, or would he just be Scooby-Doo in a church? Are you, in fact, someone who knows God, or are you someone who's just talking about God? You see, that's something I can't help you with. Only you know who you are. And I would prefer that you get to know who I know, and you do it on your own, wherever you are. So today, as I said, it's not just a question of hearing his voice, but it's a question of doing his will. When he starts talking to you, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to react with it? I don't care if you hear God speaking in a Mormon church, a, a Muslim temple, a Jehovah's Witness hall, a street corner, or you're sitting downtown you know, with the homeless or the, those that are in a shelter. I don't care if you're, you know, like arguing with your wife or preparing a sermon or you're a pastor or a teacher or an elder or a deacon or whatever you are. Those aren't really relevant to what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, what if God is real and God decides to speak to you? What are you going to do about it? That's what Vidivo asks. We always at Vidivo Church talk about that. So we're not against wherever you're going. We're more about what are you going to do with Jesus? And what happens if God speaks to you today? So today, all I can tell you is, when God starts to work on your circumstances, and you begin to know that something's up, you don't know what yet, ask, seek, knock, walk, talk, learn, discover, uncover, look up. Because your salvation is always God. It's always near you, closer than you think. Even as the soon return of Jesus is a lot sooner than you think, and it's right around the door. So, I would tell you that don't just be about football only today, but maybe at halftime, get alone, get quiet, begin to talk to and discover if there's something more to life than just existence. If there's something more to your religion and your personal faith than being a Mormon, or being a Muslim, or being a Catholic, or being a Protestant. What are you lacking in your life that maybe God is saying, Hey, I've been doing this for you for a long time now. I'm going to require something back. What if God is asking you to listen rather than interpret? What if God is asking you to think rather than believe? What if God wants you to do more than simply be, you know, that radical extremist that pushes everybody away? What if God wants you to die to yourself, to take up your cross, and to follow Jesus? That's my question to you today. Where and what is your faith? And if you want to explain it to me, please do. I'm more than open to listen. But I can tell you who I am. I'm following Jesus. And I don't know about you, but since he's coming soon, I know that when he comes, I'll see him. That when he calls, I'm listening. When he speaks, I want to do as he chooses for me to do today. Maybe you're the same way. How can you do that and how can you be a Christian? Just ask him. It's no big deal. You don't have to get all, you know, spiritual or rosy about it. Simply ask and then start following after God. Because he'll lead you in a lot of different ways, maybe, you know. But eventually he's going to lead you directly to himself. You don't need anyone else to, you know, make up stories about it or explain it to you in some marvelous, wonderful, goosebumpy way or to get all wrapped up in emotions because some, you know, marvelous concert leader, you know, came up and said, hey, let's worship and you got all this, you know, kind of like, ooh, God and have his praise of the people. So we got all, you know, giggly and googly because when it boils down to after the worship service, do you still have God? After the church service, are you still walking? After the football game's over, are you still talking to him? You see, I'm not a stuffed animal. I'm not Scooby-Doo, and I'm not a minion. I'm meat. I'm flesh and blood. And I need a God that is just as real as I am to be real to me. How about you? Wouldn't you want a God just like that? 
that is. 